Well, a habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that's acquired through repetition. A habit is when you've done, th done something so many times that your body now knows how to do it better than your mind. So if you think about it, people wake up in the morning, uh, they begin to think about their problems. Those problems are circuits of memories in the brain. Each one of those memories are connected to people and things at certain times and places. And if the brain is a record of the past, the moment they start their day, they're already thinking in the past. Each one of those memories has an emotion. Emotions are the end product of past experiences. So the moment they recall those memories of their problems, they all of a sudden feel unhappy, they feel sad, they feel pain. Now, how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So the person's entire state of being, when they start their day, is in the past. So what does that mean? The familiar past will sooner or later be predictable future. So if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, by very definition of emotions, you're thinking in the past. And for the most part, you're gonna keep creating the same life. So then people grab their cell phone, they check their WhatsApp, they check their text, they check their emails, they check Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, they tweet something, they do Instagram, uh, they check the news, and now they feel really connected to everything that's known in their life. And then they go through a series of routine behaviors. They get out of bed on the same side, they go to the toilet, they get a cup of coffee, they take a shower, they get dressed, they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, and that becomes the routine, and it becomes like a program. So now they've lost their free will to a program, and there's no unseen hand doing it to them. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. So now, 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a computer program. So then a person can say with their 5% of their conscious mind, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be free. But the body's on a whole different program. So then how do you begin to make those changes? Well, you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And that's where meditation comes in because you can teach people through practice how to change their brain waves, slow them down. And when they do that properly, they do enter the operating system where they can begin to make some really important changes. So um, most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis, you know, they wait for loss. Uh, some tragedy to make up their mind to change. And my message is why wait? And, and you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. And I think right now, the cool thing is that people are waking up. The emotional reaction you have to some experience in your life, the higher the emotional quotient, the more you pay attention to the cause. And the moment the brain puts all of its attention on the cause, it takes a snapshot, and that's called a memory. So long-term memories are created from very highly um, uh, emotional experiences. So what happens then is that people think neurologically within the circuitry of that experience, and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. And so when you have an emotional reaction to someone or something, most people think that they can't control their emotional reaction. Well, it turns out if you allow that emotional reaction, it's called a refractory period, to last for hours or days, that's called the mood. I say to someone, hey, well, what's up? You say, I'm in a mood. Well, why are you in a mood? Well, I had this thing happen to me five days ago, and I'm having one long emotional reaction. If you keep that same emotional reaction going on for weeks or months, that's called the temperament. Why is he so bitter? I don't know. Let's ask him. Why is he so bitter? Why are you bitter? Well. I had this thing happen to me nine months ago. And if you keep that same emotional reaction going on for years on end, that's called a personality trait. And so learning how to shorten your refractory period of emotional reactions is really where the, where the work starts. So then people, when they have an event, what they do is they keep recalling the event because the, the emotions of stress hormones, the survival emotions, are saying pay attention to what happened because you want to be prepared if it happens again. 
Turns out most people spend 70% of their life living in survival and living in stress. So they're, they're always anticipating the worst case scenario based on a past experience. And they're literally, out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, they're selecting the worst possible outcome and they're beginning to emotionally embrace it with fear. And they're conditioning their body into a state of fear. Do that enough times, body has a panic attack without you. you. You can't even predict it because it's programmed subconsciously. So then you say to the person, why are you this way? And they'll say, I am this way because of this event that happened to me 15 or 20 years ago. And what that means from a biological standpoint is that they haven't been able to change since that event. So then the emotions from the experience tend to give the body and the brain a rush of energy. So people become addicted to the rush of those emotions and they use the problems and conditions in their life to reaffirm their limitation so at least they can feel something. So now when it comes time to change, you say to the person, why are you this way? Well, every time they recall the event, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event is occurring. Firing and wiring the same circuits and sending the same emotional signature to the body. Well, what's the relevance behind that? Well, your body is the unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between the experience that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. So the body's believing is living in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And so then when those emotions influence certain thoughts, and they do, and then those thoughts create the same emotions and those same emotions influence the same thoughts, now the entire person's uh, state of being is in the past. So then the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before, period. And the moment you decide to make a different choice, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. So the person who has the strong emotion to some circumstance in their life, and they're, they're working and lowering the volume of that emotion, the more they lower the volume of that emotion, the more they're gonna take their attention off that person and problem, and they're gonna take their power back. There's gonna be a break in their attention from that circumstance. And now they build their own field. And now there's energy to heal. Now there's energy to create a new life. Now there's energy for the mystical moment because they've overcome their old personality self. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's not like thinking positively. That's yeah, not the never, message. Yeah. It's, it's overcoming, 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 overcoming until we become somebody else. And when that occurs and the person starts thinking differently and they start acting differently, and they start feeling differently. They're a new personality and yeah. they, they start seeing those synchronicities and serendipities. Now, crossing that river of change, the creative process now gets exciting because what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What kind of attention and intention do you want to place so that that becomes the loudest voice in your head? Mm -hmm. And if you keep practicing it, the hardware becomes a software program and it'll say, Jay, you can do anything. <laughs> Jay, uh, you live in no time and accomplish everything. Jay, you're unlimited. You just got to hang with it. On the other side of this is greatness. Whatever you want to program in there, you get to program in there. If you sat down and say, how am I going to be with my wife, my husband, my partner? How am I going to be with my kids? How am I going to be at work with my coworkers? How am I going to be in traffic? and you close your eyes and you begin to rehearse in your mind, if you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining. So now the brain goes from a record of the past to a map to the future. Now you're installing the hardware. Keep practicing it, mm -hmm. it becomes automatic, it becomes easier. Now it's a software program. You may just start behaving differently. And then if you said, well, listen, I'm not gonna wait for my healing to feel gratitude. I'm not gonna wait for my new relationship to feel love. I'm going to actually teach my body emotionally mm. what that future feels like before it happens. Now, mm. this is a big turnaround for a lot of people because we're so reliant on the outer world to change our inner world. And when people are, they could have the greatest intentions in the world, but if they don't combine that with an elevated emotion, there's no signal because the elevated emotion is the carrier. It's the energy that carries the thought. So then, when we're in separation, in lack, waiting for our wealth to feel abundance, we're basically living our whole life mm -hmm. in pain, right? Mm. So then if you reason this and a person can get up from their meditation and they literally feel differently and they're 
feeling the emotions of their future before it happens. This is turning the, the, the whole process around. They can't be looking for it. Why would they be looking for it if they felt like it, they are, it already happened? Now there's no separation. Now this is when those serendipities and coincidences and opportunities begin to show up in people's lives. So it's work, but then when they start seeing the experience in their life, all of a sudden they start believing they're more of the creator of their life yeah. and less of the victim of their life. Every time you become aware that you're doing that and your body is craving those emotions and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just going to say, I'm going to sit. And the moment that happens, when the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. We go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And we've seen this thousands of times. In fact, we can actually predict it now on a brain.